with the ladies again. Once again, welcome to Life Transformation Center, Ministry of the Church of the Living God International. And on behalf of myself and Pastor Teresa, we are the senior pastors of the ministry and also leading the church in this nation. So you are most welcome uh, to be part of our service at this morning. If you are visiting for the first time, I want to extend our welcome to you again. Thank you for being a part of this service today. Our care team will have a word with you at the end of the service. And as the, our sister said when she was giving our notices, if you're looking for a place to worship, a place you can call home, Probably you have just relocated, moved into Tasia, further, Makasi area, and you are sampling churches to see where you can fit. Again, I want to invite you prayerfully to consider Life Transformation Center family to be part of your family while in this place. And if you are visiting, you will have to go away. Please do carry our greetings to every place you go. Our house is, is open uh, all time for you. Welcome again. Amen. Amen. Family service comes once every month, and in the family service, we allow our children to be in. Amen. I was going to do some kind of disorganization of the arrangement of sitting so that each family, if you came with your children, you would sit with them. Amen. Amen you would sit, if husband and wife are sitting together, I believe the children can also sit there. Probably this will be what we'll be doing in the future. Amen. So that when also we come to the Holy Communion, you come with your family and they make sure that they have partaken of the communion. I hear somebody saying, and those of us who don't have our family here, you will present yourself on the altar. Amen. And uh, some of us, it's just a matter of time. The Lord is going to give you a family. Amen. 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 And we are praying for you. We are praying for those who are believing and trusting God for our family. Our God is a God of family. He will give you a family if you continue to be faithful and wait on him. Praise the name of Jesus. And also do the right thing. Amen. The book of Acts, chapter number 13, um, Ni Andiko Letula Msingi. Andiko Letula Msingi. Our foundational scripture. Foundational scripture. Amen. Now, children, you are going to be very attentive because I will be asking questions at the end of my preaching. So you have to remember the book we are reading. You are good in books. God bless you. You have to remember at the end of the service. Amen. I want to bring them along. Amen. So you have to remember all the books I'm going to quote today at the end of the service. We will have some questions. Let's pray together. Let's go. We are continuing with our theme on getting them in. Getting them in. We are continuing with this thing. Father, in Jesus' name, 
we thank you for our being together. Speak to your children in this house. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. So, the desire of God and the plan of God is to get his people in. To get his people in. I don't know how many of us invited somebody and they, they came. You invited somebody and they came. Anybody? Amen. Amen. Or just stand on your feet to recognize you, please. Those who invited somebody, just stand. Stand. If you invited somebody and they are here. Amen. We have two who invited, three who invited. Why is it the only ladies who invited? Oh, you invited somebody and is here? Amen. Those that were invited, please raise up. We want, we want to acknowledge you. If you are here and you are invited and you can. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Amen. We are so, continue standing, continue standing. We are so grateful and uh, thankful to God that you honored the invitation of those who invited you. They invited you because they care. They invited you because they love you. They invited you because they wanted you to come and be part of this family today. So may the Lord richly bless you. I want us to put our hands together for all those who came. Amen. You may be seated. You may be seated. You may be seated. So we are continuing with the plus one. And today is called plus one family service. Plus one family service. It's because one of the core values, our yardstick, number five, is get them in. Amen. Do what? Get them in. And uh, it is the desire of God to get as many people in, in his kingdom, in his kingdom, God wants to get as many people as possible into his kingdom. And the way and the means, it is we who are already in to extend the invitation to those who are around us and within our reach. We also do an appeal through our live transmission that goes on weekly and in every service. This morning, as we transmit live across the continents, it's also our way of getting them in. Praise the name of Jesus. It's our way of getting, a way of getting them in. Because the Lord's desire is to have them in. And when you get in, if something is good and you are in that thing, don't you think it is also a good thing to invite your friends? It is. It is. It is a good thing when you see something good to invite your friends so that they equally partake of it. Even if it's just visiting. And that's why we have said you could be visiting but it's wonderful you fellowship with us today. It's a good thing. It's a blessing. Praise the name of Jesus. When you read the scripture, there is always an appeal. The Lord says, I am the way, the life, the way. 
The Lord says, Behold, I stand at the door. Praise the name of Jesus. And I am no king. Why is he no king? So that people can get in. People can come in. Is the responsibility of every believer, of every believer, to extend an invitation to the world. Praise the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. You know, every day the world is inviting us. Doesn't it? Every day, the world is inviting us. The world is showing us how it is good. The world is telling us, come. The world is, you open, you, you put on your TV, your screen, and the world is there saying, come. You see billboards on the roads. What are they saying? Come. Hallelujah. Even when something is not good, they advertise in the way that it will be saying, come. Or it will be saying, take me. Or it will be saying, have me. Praise the name of Jesus. That is how the world is. The world is inviting us. But we have a responsibility as believers to invite those who are in the world into this kingdom. We have to invite them into this kingdom. We have to call them into this kingdom. We have to implore them so that they can come into this kingdom. Praise the name of Jesus. And the reason is simple. In the book of Acts where we have read, read, he says, for the Lord has commanded us. It's a command. The Lord has commanded us. And he says, I have set you as a light to the Gentiles. Every born again believer, you are a light. And you're supposed to be a light to the Gentiles. Every Christian is supposed to be a light to the Gentiles. Now let me put it this way. You are supposed to be a light in all areas of your life. You are supposed to be a light at your place of work. You are supposed to be a light in your business. You are supposed to be a light in that school where you are, in that college where you are. You are supposed to radiate the light that is coming from the light. And the light is the Son of the living God, Jesus Christ. Praise the name of Jesus. Just like the stars gauge their reflection from the sun, we also receive our reflection of light from the light. Amen. We receive and get our reflection, our radiation as a light wherever you are is coming from the connection of the light which is the sun of God. Praise the name of Jesus. And if we be the light, he also says, we are a salvation. We are a salvation. Praise the name of Jesus. You are a salvation. We are a salvation for this generation. You are a salvation in your generation. You are a salvation in your family. Praise the name of Jesus. We are not this salvation. The salvation is our Lord Jesus Christ. But we are a salvation. Why? Because we carry that message. 
We carry the message of the Savior. We carry the message of the Savior. We bring the message of the Savior. We minister the message of the Savior. And the Savior saves. So, who are we? We are a salvation to them. Because we carry that message. We minister that message. We speak that message. We talk that message. We walk that message. Praise the name of Jesus. Last Wednesday, when Pastor Joshua was teaching here, he talked about our way of life being the greatest evangelism one can ever be. Praise the name of Jesus. Your life, your conduct among the people, your conduct in the world is the greatest evangelism you can be. In other words, you are the greatest salvation that can be. You carry the Savior, the salvation of the world. So your conduct with people, your interaction with people, how do you carry yourself? How do you hold yourself? Praise the name of Jesus. You know, sometimes because one man, one woman, they are carrying themselves carelessly and they profess to be Christians, therefore all Christians are clamped together, all believers are clamped together just because you You were careless about yourself. Praise the name of Jesus. So we are condemned wholesomely because of you. And people say these Christians or these Christians. Why? Because one man and one woman who say they are Christians, their conduct is unbecoming. Our conduct cannot be, cannot sell. Praise the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Have you ever wondered, Christians, If you were carrying your Bible and you met another Christian carrying their Bible, the wonder would be none of them would say hi to anyone. But if it was a Muslim, they would have said salam alaikum. Whether they know the person or not. We have our Bible. But it's not easy to fellowship. It's not easy. So we can't sell. We are so much divided, we can't sell. We are so much selfish that we can't sell. I'm talking about plus one family service. Praise the name of Jesus. Did you attempt to invite your neighbor today? Thank God for those who came. Did you attempt? You're not bringing them here. You're just inviting. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We are a salvation. We carry salvation. We portray salvation. And when people see your true way of life, they will be asking. You won't even say. They will be asking. They will be reaching out to you. Praise the name of Jesus. Because your way of life is a testimony to them and it's a salvation. Is anybody interested in your God? Hello? Is anybody interested in your God? Is anybody interested in your God? 
Is anybody interested in the way of your worship? Praise the name of Jesus. And the Bible says in that day, people will be following up, reaching out to a Jewish man. They say, we have heard about your God. Amen. Amen. Is it a good thing you received? Did we receive a good faith? Is our faith good? Oh, talk to me, come on. Is our faith good? Do you like this faith? You like it? One time I said, I've been in this thing for years. Praise the name of Jesus. I've been in this thing for years. I was telling Pastor Fever about 40 years walking with the Lord. 40 years walking with the Lord. And in my 40 years walk with the Lord, today if you woke up and told me it was a fallacy, it, it was not real, I would tell you, I think it's the best life to live. So even if it was not true, I think it's, it was good. I would love to continue living it even if it is not true. Praise the name of Jesus. I, I don't regret a moment of my 40 years' walk with the Lord. Praise the name of Jesus. I don't regret a moment. Is it good? Is this life good? Do you enjoy it? Are you happy about it? I love introducing people to buying land. Those who, are, those who revolve around me, they know that. Amen? Because I know land appreciates. If one bought a car today, four million, and another one bought a land today, one million. Four years from now, the car value would have goes down. But the one million will have gone. Are you getting what I'm saying? It's a, it's a wonderful thing to have a car. It takes you from point A to B. Praise God. But it's more valuable to invest in land because it will appreciate. So whenever I hear about a land, it's like in a new kuambia what? Hey, have you had this land there being sold? Those who have been around me, you know that. I, I tell you, hey, please, have an acre. Can, can you get a piece of this? The land is there. I, I just find that I become restless because I want as many people as possible to get some land. It is a good thing. I bought some land a few years ago. And when I was selling it, I just bought it about half a million. But when I sold it after a few years, it was 2.7. I made 2.2. .2. It just appreciated. And you can guess how I was smiling. If I put my 500,000 into the bank within the, that period, I wouldn't have gotten that money. Land appreciate is a good thing. I'm saying salvation is a good thing. Amen. Praise the name of Jesus. So because it's a good thing, I can't keep quiet. Because it's a good thing, I have to share, I have to tell people, I have to invite them in. Praise the name of Jesus. So is, if there is anybody here looking for land, look for me. <laughs> 
Praise the name of Jesus. Do what? Do what? But if there's somebody here looking for salvation, look for me. Because that one is higher than the lamb. Am I talking to us? Am I talking to us? Praise the name of Jesus. It, once you find something that is good, the four lepers, four men who had lepros, the book of Kings, and they went to their camps, the camp of their enemy, and they found God had performed a miracle. They ate, ate, and realized we need to go and hide some. They went to heed and realized they cannot finish. They said, we are not doing a good thing. We are not doing a good thing. Today is a day of good news. Let's go back to the city and tell people a miracle has happened so that they can come and plunder. When you find a good thing, what do you do with it? What do you do with it? Some of us, we find a good thing, we sit on it. We don't want anybody to know. One time, I stayed with a lady and she bumped into a good thing. But she didn't have money to invest in that thing. So she kept quiet looking for money and she did not want to share with me because she thought if she shared with me, I will get the money and invest in before she invests. Hello? As she continued to wait that she would get money, keeping her secret, guess what? She missed it. And I also missed it. How about if she shared with me, I invested, it will be for her good because I was staying with her. Amen? Praise the name of Jesus. She was hosting me. If I succeeded, she would have succeeded. Listen to me, child of God. The gospel of Jesus Christ is about sharing. The gospel of the kingdom of God is about sharing. You cannot afford to be silent about it. And that's why Jesus is sending out an invitation. Come to me, those who labor and heavy laden, and I shall give you a rest. Why? Praise the name of Jesus. That's why when Jesus saw them, the Bible says he was moved with compassion. Why? He wanted to get them in. It's our responsibility to get them in. It's your responsibility to get them in. And you cannot get them in until you are proud about it. You are happy about it so that you can share. Praise the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So we are a salvation. You are a salvation. You can't keep quiet. You should talk about it. Praise the name of Jesus. The book of Genesis 18 and verse 19. The Lord has to say this over the man called Abraham. Let's read together. For I have chosen him so that he will direct his children and his household after him to keep the way of the Lord by doing what is right and just so that the Lord will bring about for Abraham what he has promised. So the Lord has chosen Abraham so that he will direct his 
children. Praise the name of Jesus. Other version says, I know, for I know Abraham will direct his children. What a testimony. Help me to tell somebody, God is a God of a family. Please say it again as you believe it. God is a God of family. So God is speaking and is saying, I know Abraham. I have chosen him because I understand. I know Abraham has the capacity. Abraham has the ability to command his children, to direct his children, to guide his children, to walk with his children, to teach his children. And God the Father has delegated his fatherhood spirit to us. Amen. God is the father. Why is the God of the father? Why is God the father? Because he's a God of a family. That's why is God the father. Praise the name of Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. And God the Father was very generous. He decided to share his son. Amen. He decided to do what? To share his son. Because he's a generous father. God is so generous. He decided to give ki ki kingdom. To give the kingdom to his son. Because God is generous. He's a sharing father. He's concerned about his son. He gives him the kingdom. And he speaks of Abraham. He says, I know Abraham. By the time God is speaking to Abraham, Abraham did not have a child. Abraham did not have a child. But a God, the God who is the father, has the plan. I said this morning, God has your, your architectural plan, your structural plan, your mechanical plan. God has the entire design of your being. God has got the entire design of your being. Praise the name of Jesus. And sometimes we think we are late. Sometimes we think we are going to miss it. Sometimes we think God is delaying. There is no delaying. Uh, Pastor Teresa said here during the night, Kesha, delay does not necessarily mean denial. Praise the name of Jesus. Sometimes when we, we think we are delaying, we think we are delaying, we quickly uh, think that this is a denial. God will never deny every good thing to his children. Praise the name of Jesus. Every good parent, they will not deny good things to their children. And the parents know what is good for their children. Sometimes children, they come with something they think is good, and the parent looks at it and says, this is not good. Praise the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. God knows what is good for you. God knows what is good for your family. God knows what is good for your marriage. God knows what is good for you now and tomorrow. Praise the name of Jesus. So, he understand. And God knew Abraham. Despite the fact that at this point in time, he doesn't have children when he's going to have children, he's going to command them in the ways of the Lord. And what does he say? His household after him. After who? After him. After him. Abraham is going to be an example to his family. Amen. 
Abraham is going to be an example to his household. When you talk about household, he has servants. He has, uh, Abraham was a wealth and a rich man. He had everything. You are talking about hundreds of people under him that he's going to be an example to. Listen to me, child of God. In this family service, you ought to be an example to your children. If you are not praying, don't expect your children to pray. If you are not reading the word, don't expect your children to read the word. If you are not a giver, don't expect your children to give. If you are not a worshiper, don't expect your children to worship. Praise the name of Jesus. Praise the name of Jesus. What are you commanding your children into? And the only way to make sure that our families are in is by commanding them in the ways of the Lord. Praise the name of Jesus. Now listen to me. Commanding does not mean force. It means you are making, you are leading, you are going before them. Praise the name of Jesus. I am commanding my children by going before them. They look at me and they see and they learn from me. They want to learn from me. Praise the name of Jesus. They look at me and see my way of life, my way of talk, my way of interaction. They look at me and that's how you command. Can I hear an amen in the house? Can I hear an amen in the house? Amen. Praise the name of Jesus. Amen. Praise the name of Jesus. Amen. There are movies you cannot watch in our house. Because our children will tell you that is not watched in this house. You know how we visit people and uh, the temptation of getting hold of the remote in, in that house you are visiting becomes too strong because you feel there's like a movie you can watch there also. Just you realize in this house that a movie is forbidden. And when you put them, the children go, oh! The, the children, our children will make noise. You will hear noise because they know there are certain things that cannot be watched in this house. Praise the name of Jesus. Praise the name of Jesus. Because we don't do it, they don't do it. Amen. Hallelujah. It doesn't matter how much you shout. It's your way of life that is important. Did you hear that? It doesn't matter how much you shout. It's your way of life that people see. I can shout about holiness. But if I'm not living in that holiness. And listen to me, child of God. This morning I was talking about the written word. I was talking about the written word. When we receive the written word and mix it with the spirit, it becomes the living word of God. And every living word of God brings transformation. Praise the name of Jesus. Every living word of God, it becomes living because you believe in it. Otherwise, if you don't believe in it, it is a letter. And the letter killeth. Praise the name of Jesus. The letter does what? Killeth. That means if it is indeed the word of God, and it is true word of God, and you don't believe it, it brings condemnation to you. Can you give me John chapter 3 and verse 17? John chapter 3 and verse 17. Thank you, Jesus. John 3 and 17. Let's read together. For God into the world to condemn the world, but to save the world through him. Yes. What did God do? 
He did not send his son into the world to do what? To condemn you. Jesus did not come here to condemn you. Amen. Let's go to the next one. Verse 18. Let's read. Whoever believes in him is not condemned. But whoever does not believe stands condemned already because he has not believed in the name of God's one and only son. So who condemns another? You condemn yourself. Praise the name of Jesus. Jesus did not come to condemn anybody. God did not send Jesus to condemn you. But those who do not believe, they are already condemned. So you are your inability to believe in itself is a condemnation. Your failure to believe in itself is a condemnation. So, who carries the burden? It is not God who is believing. Who is supposed to believe? It is you who is supposed to believe. So, who carries the condemnation? It's not God. It's me who has, who have refused to believe that brings condemnation. Hallelujah. Praise the name of Jesus. Praise the name of Jesus. So Abraham was going to govern his family in the ways of the Lord. God desires we bring our children in. We bring our families in. We, be, we bring our friends in. Praise the name of Jesus. We have the mandate. We have the responsibility to bring them in. Everybody revolving around me. I don't miss a moment to share with them what I believe. Praise the name of Jesus. I share them with them the word of God. I said the Christians, Christians are the people who would rarely share their faith with anybody. You, you are afraid to share your faith. If you believe in something good, why are you afraid? If you believe salvation is a good thing, why are you afraid to share? And when your friends, who are the sinners, who live in sin, share about what they do, I say last time, they share with impunity. In your face. And you, you can't even say anything. They will tell you all that things they have done. And you are just there smiling. You can't share the love of God with them. This is not a very good message. It's not exciting, isn't it? It doesn't have to be. Amen. It doesn't have to be exciting. Praise God. The church is weak. And not because pastors are weak. The failure is discipleship. When people get saved, they are not discipled. So they don't know what to say. They don't know what to share. There are good people who go to church, but they don't know what to share. They are good Christians. They sing in church, just as we have sung. But they have no courage to share about their faith with anybody. So the church is weak. The church is weak. Christians are weak. But the sinners, they are bold. They are bold. They can tell you how the weekend was. But you cannot tell them how your weekend was. Because you're weak. You can't even share what you had in church because you're weak. You are afraid of the rebuttal. You have received the spirit of Christ. The spirit of Christ is not the spirit of fear. Praise the name of Jesus. The spirit we have received. Sometimes when children come home, they tell you everything that they got to know in school. Praise the name of Jesus. 
My, my, my young boy, when comes home, she be, he, he becomes a teacher. He becomes a teacher. He turns around our house girl and says, he's going to teach you. And he's teaching the way they teach. No, 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 you're not saying it right. Say it this way. Why don't we become like little children that we can share our faith? We can share about the message. We can share about what the Lord has done in our lives. Can I hear an amen? amen. Can I hear an amen? amen? So Abraham, God knew that this man would share. He was not going to keep quiet. He's not going to hold it. The church is weak today because believers are afraid to share their faith with the sinners. Are you telling me there are no sinners around you? Why are you afraid to share your faith? Because in the first place, you seem not to believe in that faith. Hallelujah. 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 The book of Exodus 10, 9. Exodus 10, 9. Let's read together. And Moses said, We will go with our young and our old, with our sons and our daughters, with our flocks and our herds. We will go, for we must hold a feast to the Lord. You know, this context was being done on the soil of Africa. On the soil of Africa. Moses is given an easy option. Let the men go and worship. Leave your wives here. Leave your children here. Leave your flock here. Let the men go and worship. We have no problem with that. The greatest threat to the devil is when everybody goes to worship. You didn't hear that? Praise the name of Jesus. The greatest threat to the enemy is when everybody is going to worship. When the father is going to worship, the mother is going to worship, and the children are going to worship, it is the greatest threat to the enemy. They didn't hear what I said, so I have to repeat it. Praise the name of Jesus. The greatest threat to the enemy is when you, the mother, the father, and the children, or you, the mother, because we have some mothers here who are single mothers, when you, the mother, and your children, Go to worship. The enemy trembles. Because he wants the children to remain behind. And thank God for the parents who are raising up their children in the church. The Bible says, train a child in the way he should go. And when they grow, they will not depart away from it. Praise the name of Jesus. Very few parents, they know the story in the book of Exodus. Very few parents, if you ask them, tell me about the book of Judges, what is there? They will tell you, you know, I'm not going to Bible school like you. No, 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 no. You don't need to go to Bible school. Praise the name of Jesus. You ask them, what is the story of the book of now? now? They, they have no idea. The book of Esther, they have no idea. Praise the name of Jesus. The book of Ruth, they have no idea. You ask them, do you know any story of the book of Joel? They have no idea. Praise the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Give us back that scripture, please. Yeah. 
Exodus. Because we are going to celebrate the feast. And the Moses says we will go our young, our old, with our sons and our daughters, with our flock and our herds will go. For we must hold a feast to the Lord. I said this morning I like this church. This is a good church. This is a good church. That this church, the young come, the old come, the sons come, their daughters come, their wives come. And additionally, they don't leave their pockets at home. Praise and This is a good church. Any one of you, you would love to pastor this kind of church, isn't it? Because they also come with a flock for a feast. Oh, come on, nobody's hearing this. Praise the name of Jesus. They also come with their flocks and heads. They don't leave anything at home. It's a good church. God is telling Moses, never leave anything to chance. And the enemy is busy bargaining. When I grew up in the village, there are men who would never go to church, but they would send their offering. Listen to me. God is interested in your heart more than he's interested in your offering. You didn't hear it. Praise the name of Jesus. So you will hear in a religious setup, this man who does not go to church from January 2nd to December 24th. Then he appears on 25th. Then he will also appear on 31st and on 1st if there's going to be a service. But he's very faithful in giving his offering. God needs your heart more than he needs your money. In actual sense, gold and silver belongs to him. So he doesn't need it. Praise the name of Jesus. So it is important it is important, and I speak to families that are here. It is important for your children when you command them by example. Command them by example. Let them see how your life is with the Lord. Praise the name of Jesus. Sometimes our children will walk away from the Lord. But even if they walked away from the Lord, you must have taught them. The Bible says they will not depart away from it. They may wander for a while, but that word you spoke, the way of life they see, will pull them back to the Lord. Praise the name of Jesus. One time, During my jubilee celebration here, my son said, I used to think you were one of the worst fathers. You know, because he did not appreciate my way of... <laughs> Amen. And one of it was... I will keep them to read the scriptures for long. So in the night we will see everybody has to read. Read that chapter. If, you, if we miss to read for two days, they are in trouble because we will read until we finish. And he looked at me and thought, this kind of parenting is not the best. Amen. But during my jubilee celebration here, he said, now he can look back and appreciate what I was doing. Praise the name of Jesus. He can look back and do what? Appreciate what I was doing. My, my, my style was a little bit off to what he thinks a father should do. I, I was just commanding, commanding as Abraham would command. I'm saying commanding by really command and doing. Praise the name of Jesus. But I want to admonish the parents that are here. 
you may not have the kind of grace I have. Treat your children with grace. Praise the name of Jesus. If you command, command with grace. Let them see your way of life. Praise the name of Jesus. Let them appreciate your way. And foundation, foundation, foundation is very key. That's why when you bring your child to Mount Moriah Christian School, the first place we take them in is in the foundation class. Because we believe foundation is critical. Praise the name of Jesus. They said we are not going to leave our children. We have to go with them. The last scripture. The last scripture is in Joshua. It's a whole sermon, but I'm not going to dive into it, but I want us to read it. I have very few minutes left. It's a family service. Praise be to God. Joshua 24. Joshua 24. Verse 15. Let's read together. It's right on the screen. Let's go. Praise the name of Jesus. Some of us here, we could be either second generation. We could be second generation, third generation, or fourth generation. Amen. If you are the first one to get saved, born again in your family, then you are the first generation. If you are the first, you are on the first generation. Amen. That means you have to fight and make the way for the other generations. The children of Israel are in the promised land. They have entered the promised land. Joshua has given them their part faithfully. But then it comes a, a time when people need to make a decision. And uh, he tells the children of Israel, where we are, you will have a choice either to obey God or serve other gods. Remember, Abraham is called from his father's house, Terah. Terah is moving from Mesopotamia in the land of the Ur of the Chaldeans. And when he moves, they reach a place and they are stuck there. At that point, God calls Abraham and they say, come on. I want you to leave your father's house. I want to leave you to leave your father's house. I want to ask you this morning, what gods are associated with your father's house? What are the gods that are associated with your father's house? And when God plucks Abraham, he says, yes, from your family, I pluck you. Come along. I will show you. You're going to be a father of many nations. I'm going to use you. I'm going to establish you. Out of you, I'm going to create a great nation. Out of you, the nations of the world are going to be blessed. God is calling Abraham to depart from his father's household to move away from the gods of his father. Finally, God is preparing a lineage to get his people in. Come on, say, get them in. He's beginning to prepare a path through Adam, Abraham to get his people in. So what does he do? He plucks Abraham 
begins to work on him so that through Abraham, people will get in. When the people ends in Egypt, in Africa, and are staying there for close to 400 years, they learned and got to know the gods of the Egyptians. That culture is there. God plucks them because God wants to, them to get in. He wants them to get in. He plucks them from Egypt. He brings them through miraculous work. The Red Sea is divided and they come out. They are told the land is just nearby to enter. People refused. People resisted. What does God, God do? He comes, he tells Moses, Moses, I am able to make another nation out of you. I will kill all these people. Moses goes before the Lord and Moses cries and intervenes and says, come on, if you kill them here, please, if you kill them here, the people of the world will say, other nations will say, you promised them what you could not give them. So God listens to the challenge of Moses. And what does he do? God says, okay, they are going to die a natural death. So for them to die a natural death, they are subjected to wander in the wilderness for 40 years. They wander in the wilderness for 40 years. A certain of age of those who left Egypt had to die. Because Egypt never left them. God wanted them to enter. But he just realized they left Egypt, but Egypt did not come out of them. So what happened? They had to die in the wilderness. They couldn't enter with Egypt. I can assure you, you can't enter with Egypt. Egypt has to die for you to make it. Praise the name of Jesus. Our Egypt must die for you to enter the kingdom of God. So what does God do? He allows them to go through the fields of the Philistines, the fields of the Amorites, the fields, and at some point, they come into an agreement with the Amorites. What happens? They also learn the worship of the gods of the Amorites. Eventually, they enter the promised land. They have a baggage. They have a history. And when Moses, when Joshua looks at these people, he sees a people who can not worship God in spirit and truth. He decides there must be a covenant. We must make a covenant today. And Joshua steps forward and said, give us the previous verse, verse 14, give us verse 14. Let's read together. Now therefore, fear the Lord, serve him in sincerity and in truth, and put away the gods which your fathers served on the other side of the river and in Egypt. Serve the Lord. Because there was a danger and distinction needed to be made. Will you worship God or would you worship the gods of your fathers? They had three levels of gods that they needed to deal with. They were confronted by a certain spirit. I don't know where you are in your worship. Some of us will begin to worship in Akuanzito, Haumalizi. Hello. Unausikia kiuzito fulani ibada yako inakuwa ni ngumu. Is there anything you need to deal with today in this family service? Is there anything you need to deal with today 
in this family service. The man says, as for me, I'm a house. As for me and my house. Remember Joshua is among the men who came from Egypt. He understood everything too well. And he says, as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. But for you today, decide. Listen to me, child of God. Serving God is a personal choice. Praise the name of Jesus. Serving God is a personal choice. You can choose whether your family is going to serve the Lord, whether you are going to raise an altar for Yahweh in your house. The choice is yours. You can choose whether you are going to raise an altar in your business for God. The choice is yours. You can choose whether that office you go to, you can raise an altar and everybody will know there is a woman here who serves God. There is a man in this office who serves. Everybody will have a testimony because it cannot be hidden. A light that is hid. Read. Will you serve the Lord? Joshua made a commitment. Joshua made a covenant. As parents in this family service, you have a responsibility of what goes on in your home. The back stops with you. The back stops with you. The young people that are here, you better learn this now. You better learn this now. They are, these children have a head start. These children have a head start. Those of you who got saved and you are not raised up on that foundation, you know the struggle. Because the foundation was not there. They have a head start. That's why they can stand here, tell you what Exodus is. They have a head start. They can tell you what Numbers is. When one stood here and said, he wanted to talk about the book of Numbers, I thought he would say, it is the book of mathematics. But I heard it was, it was not the book of mathematics. He really knows what that book is all about. Praise the name of Jesus. They have a headset. They know what sin is. They have a headset. Let's stand on our feet. Will you be an ambassador of Jesus Christ? Will you be an ambassador of Jesus Christ? Will you be an ambassador of Jesus Christ? What we are missing in the church today is the radical believer. The radical believer. What we are missing today in the church is radicalism. What we are missing today in the church is a Christian who is radical, who is passionate about their faith and they are willing to share it. Church, we are missing a radical constituency of people who will not just come to church. It's not enough to come to church. It's not enough to come to church. I'm glad and happy to see you in church. But it's not enough to come to church. It's not enough. This church today, the church in our season, lacks radicalism. Lacks a people who have a zeal to share their faith. 
lacks a people who have a zeal to stand for what they believe. It has people who are easily compromised. People who are afraid to say, I am a Christian. People who are afraid to say, I am a believer. People who are afraid to say, I am born again. And even those who say, I'm born again, if you ask them the reason for their faith, they have no idea. If you ask them, why are you saved? If you ask them, this is not apologetics, but we encounter states of apologetics right and left. When you meet somebody who is questioning your faith, do you have a foundation, a ground you can stand not to defend Jesus, Jesus defends himself, to open up your mouth and you share what you know about your faith and Jesus will do the rest. Do you know what you believe? Do you know what you believe? Have you to consult? Oh, let me ask my pastor what I believe. You need to know why you believe what you believe. If you ask a Muslim boy, why is a Muslim, they will tell you. They will tell you. Because Madras, Madras is there. They go to Madras so that they are taught their faith. The Christians are nowhere to be taught their faith. And they are not passionate about their faith. And that's why many of us, we don't read scriptures. We only see the scripture here. When it comes, you carry on your phone a Bible. But the, the greatest app that is active is your WhatsApp, is your Instagram, is your Telegram is your Facebook. Those are apps that have got the highest traffic on your phone. But the Bible app, once in a blue moon. Once in a blue moon. Why is it? Brethren, I'm passionate about this. That we are having a cold, a cold church. I'm not talking about this church. I'm talking about the body of Jesus Christ. We are having a people who are cold because the word of God is not in them rich, dwelling them. You read here the scripture, you read next Sunday when you come. And that's why not many of you, you have a solid Bible with you. Even in the house. Not many of us. Have this Bible. I want us to go before the Lord. Lord, in your anger, in your anger, remember mercy. Remember mercy. Please talk to God. Talk to Jesus. Will you believe the word of God? 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 I say talk to God. I say talk to God. Open up your mouth and talk to God. Open up your mouth and talk to God. This is not just a service. This is not just a service. 
I know when the service is not a normal service. This is not just the service you know. I say, open up your mouth and talk to God. Shut up, open up, open up, open up your head. Talk to God. Talk to God. Lord, in your anger, remember mercy. Remember mercy, Lord. In your anger, remember mercy. Why would the church be so weak? Why would we only have a form of goldiness? A form of goldiness. We carry some goldiness. When people see us, they, they see, yes, we look like we are Christians. We look like we are believers. We, we have a form, but there's no power. There's no power. We have a form. We have a form, but there's no power. We have a form, but there's no power. I say talk to God. Since the days of John the Baptist, the kingdom of God suffers violent Violent men, violent men, violent people, take it by force. Take it, listen to me, there is nothing that is going to come to you easily. Nothing is going to come to you easily. Life is a spiritual warfare. Life is a spiritual warfare. I say life is a warfare. Nothing is coming to you freely. Life is a warfare. Kill, kill a Remember mercy. Jesus. 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 Shadabada. Shadabada. Indalabada. Shadabada. Imbra babu sanda rabada ikala mana sheda badada yanda rabada babu sanda rabada da sheda da rikala baba babu sanda rabada babu sheda da umamini. to lift up your lift up your voice and pray lift up your voice lift up your voice lift up your voice and pray lift up your voice lift up your voice lift up your voice pray 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 i say pray i say pray i say pray pour your heart to him i say pray 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 lift up your heart lift up your voice and I pray, 
I say pray. Pray. Shadabada in the Rabada. Ye Karababababo, Sinadada. I have seen you. In the Shadaba. In the Ramana, Shadaba. Re Karababababo, Sadada. Ye Karababababo, Sandere. E Brabababababa, Shadada. I say pray, pray, pray. I say pray, pray, pray. Left up, left up, left up, left up, left up, left up. Pray. Oh, shut up, Baba Babu. invest in your family. For your family to be what God wants us to be. Somebody will have to invest in it. You will have to make sacrifices. You will have to travail. You will have to travail. You will have to pray. You will have to fight. It doesn't just happen. It doesn't just happen. And I wonder, I don't know why I keep on seeing the young people. The young people. If you cannot invest now, if you cannot invest now in God, I can assure you, your children will have no foundation. If you cannot invest now if you cannot invest now in God if you cannot invest in God now if you cannot invest young people if you can't invest in God now investing in prayer investing in Bible study investing in fasting invest if you cannot invest now your family has got no foundation your children will have no point of reference the Bible says Jesus giving a parable that people who went out to work. And the parable says there are those who came in the evening but they were paid the same. Why were they paid the same? They had to make up. They had to make up for the lost time. And when you are making up for the lost time, you work extra harder. You can make it easier if you invest now. You can invest now and make your tomorrow easier because you have invested. God is not unjust to pay us the same. Listen to me. God is not unjust to pay us the same. They had to work hard to make up the morning hours. When we read it in the Bible, it just seems, come late and you'll get the same. No, no. He will, he will not be God to do that. You have to make up. Child of God, you have to make up. 
So instead of waiting and consoling yourself, ata wale walikuja jioni walilipa the same. Instead of consoling yourself, invest. Invest in prayer. We call here for a prayer meeting. The young people are not there. Invest in prayer. We say there's a Bible study on, on Wednesday. Young people are not there. I am, I am a product. I am a product of 24-7. 24-7. I am a product. It's not easy. It's not easy. It's not easy. But as young as you are, some of you, you are going to get married. Now children are there. You have no time. But if you did invest before you got to that level, you have the energy, you have the power. When you start to pray, you are not looking for prayer. You open your mouth and the prayer is bubbling because you have invested. Because you have invested. In this family service, they are looking up to you. I want us to go to the communion table. Communion table. Twendale kila siku. says for first of all when you come together as a church I hear that there are divisions among you and in part I believe it for there must also be factions among you that those who are approved may be recognized among you it's in the context the Lord's Supper. Paul says, I hear there are divisions among you. The body is one. The body is one. And when there are divisions, people want to pursue their own agenda within agenda. It becomes disastrous. It becomes disastrous. But it says among you there are those who are supposed to be recognized. But those recognized pursue the vision of the visionary. The vision is one. There cannot be two visions. The vision is one. But then he rebukes them. Because when they come, they start eating their own style, their own way. And some would eat until they are drunk. They wouldn't care about another one. Family is about caring. Family is about caring. Now, caring does not mean we overlook when we should rebuke you, when we should correct you, when we should train you. A good family, people rebuke, people correct, people teach, people are reprimanded in a good family. So, Paul speaks about all these things and he tells them don't you have houses where you can eat and drink or do you despise the church of God and shame those who have nothing because they would come na mtu anakula ile amekuja nayo hataki kujua kama mwingine it seems to be a family and what we are saying church is a family to demonstrate that, 
we are coming on this table equally the same to fellowship on the table of the Lord. So this is what he says. For I received from the Lord that which I also delivered to you, that that, that the Lord Jesus, on the same night in which he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, Take it, this is my body which is broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same manner, he also took the cup after supper, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death till he comes. Father, we proclaim, we announce, we prophesy, we speak, and Lord, we shout that Jesus, you died on the cross. You were buried. You rose. You are seated at the hand, hand, right hand of the Father. And you are coming again. You are coming again. We declare, Maranatha, Maranatha, our Lord cometh. Our Lord cometh. And we come on this table as a family with thanksgiving in our hearts. We receive the bread and we receive the cup. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. The name that is above every name. The name of our Lord Jesus Christ. And everybody said, Amen. Amen. I would that the pastors step forward for communion. The pastors, please, do step forward for communion. Um, they will continue to sing that song, Kill Us Up, as we... Mm, Thank you, Jesus. The elders, the deacons, and the ashes, please step forward. Go ahead, we can run it as quickly as we can. Shut up, I don't know. 